I'm Jamie Buchanan, and I've been a full-time professional auto detailer for over 32 years. I've been paid to detail and restore everything from fighter jets to multi-million dollar cars. Any of your buddies want you to come pick them up if you had that thing. To some of the nastiest, dirtiest jobs that no one else in the world would even touch. Boom! That almighty! Now I'm here to bring you pro-level tips, tricks, and advice from professionals in the detailing industry worldwide. But here's the deal. You need to hit the like and subscribe. It's something that your mother would really want you to do. Yeah! Last time on Visual Perfection Official, I transformed this moldy Mini Cooper into a shiny gem for its owner. It took a full day of work, but once it was done, this car sparkled like new money. However, the toughest part of the detail is still ahead of us, the interior. This vehicle's been sitting outside for I don't know how long, and from my initial look, it seems to have some unwanted squatters during that time. Now the carpet's very mushy from some kind of moisture, and the whole car reeks of mold and mouse shearing. Now stay tuned as I completely tear down the interior, clean every piece, and I'm gonna put it all back together before handing it over to its owner. So before we get to tearing this car apart, let me rewind just a bit and share what's led up to this decision. I had just finished cleaning the exterior and was ready to check out the interior to assess the job. The musty smell and overall humidity inside told me that the insulation was probably soaked beneath the carpet. What we're gonna do is we're gonna back it outside. Um, we're gonna pull the mats, we're gonna pull the edgings here and we're gonna check up under it to see if the carpet is wet. If the insulation padding is wet, we have to take it out. If the padding is not wet and it just looks real dirty and matted, then we're gonna be fine. But we don't know until we can remove the edge pieces and go to cleaning and seeing what's in the insulation pad. So I removed the front seat, I pulled the car into the light, and I peeled back the edge of the carpet to see what was really going on underneath. Hey guys, look here. Come down to visual perfection. We got your new and improved bucket seats. Nah, I think we're gonna be okay. Yeah. Wow, look at that mess, man. Like the rats have been, look here, where they've nested under the carpet. Yeah. We're gonna have to tear it apart to get all the stuff out of it. Have to discontinue for the day because we're gonna have to get approval. So look here, see the water in it? All the water, all the rat poop and food. So yeah, we're gonna have to take our time and do it right. After ending the day knowing I had to take the carpet out, I picked up the next day right where I'd left off taking out the other seat. But the discoveries were far from over. Holy crap! Look at the monster snake skin up underneath that seat, dude. Like, oh my lord, have mercy, Jesus. Oh, oh look at that, boys. Shoo. The snake. I'm a snake. Dear God. I don't got no hairs on my arm, but they are standing up. Look at them things. Shoo. Hey. Big old snake skin in there. You gotta be kidding me, man. Look at that monster. Oh my freaking Jamie. If it's in the car, John, I, I, nah, no. You better shut that door and I'm off for next week with that. That's some gun laying in here somewhere. He is. Now we're gonna be. fresh, look. Not gonna lie, my nerves was a little shot after finding the snake skin and lots of mice evidence. Finding snakes, rats, spiders, maggots, and any other critter you can imagine are all too common when dealing with abandoned vehicles. And it is by far my least favorite part of the job. Now that the seats are out, it's onto the console. And this one's a bit tricky. BMW definitely don't want you taking this one apart with all the different size screws that they used. With everything out, the only thing holding the carpet in was the accelerator pedal. And getting it out wasn't the easiest thing in the world, in fact, I broke it to take it out, but according to the Mini Cooper manual, this piece is meant to be replaced if it's removed. So I went ahead and ordered a new one to throw on when reinstalling the carpet. 
Now that the carpet's out, I've got a crew member pressure washing it clean while I tackle vacuuming and disinfecting the interior. Once the inside is thoroughly cleaned, I'll move on to the plastics, console, and the seats. Meanwhile, the carpet's been treated with an all-purpose cleaner and a bio-enzyme, and it's ready to hang up for drying. So guys, we have gone as far as we can go today on the Mini Cooper. We've got everything cleaned and ready. We got everything ready to go back together. We just have to wait for the padding on the carpet to dry. So that's probably gonna take several days because we're gonna be putting it in front of the big fan. And then once it becomes dry, we'll get back with you, but we're gonna transition into tearing a Range Rover apart that has a leak. We're not really for sure if it's from the windshield or the sunroof drains, but we're getting ready to dive in and find out. It's been a few days since I last worked on this Mini. I let the carpet dry out over the weekend, and now I'm ready to put it back together and get it to the customer. Reassembling is always the most rewarding part. It's when the car really starts to take shape and form and to look new again as each piece goes back in separately. There's nothing quite like that feeling of seeing it all come together. When you compare this to the condition that it was in when it arrived, this Mini has been everything but pooped and slid in. I couldn't be happier with how it turned out. It took two solid days of work on the interior and one for the exterior. Now it's ready to be shipped out so I can move on to the next project. Now as always, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps the channel and it allows us to keep bringing you content like this. I'll catch you in the next one.